change these five settings in Google Analytics 4, or else you're only ever going to have two months worth of user data in your reports. Visitors to your website may not be tracked correctly, and it's all totally avoidable if you just make these quick settings changes. So we did a training on Google Analytics 4, and this is a small snippet from that training. So we're going to show you how to change these settings right now. Uh, step two, there are some key default settings that I want you to be aware of. Uh, and the first one here is going to be your, your session timeout. And you can go to data streams to take a look at that. Uh, that's going to be in here. And then uh, I believe it was configure. tag settings here and then uh, by default they only show you three you got to click on show all and here is the session timeout so by default so i actually changed this already um by default it is 30 minutes i believe so you'll go in there you'll see something like this um a reason to increase it would be if if you are actively blogging on your site um, and people actually like you know were if they went to your site and they're reading a longer article uh, they might actually get distracted go make themselves lunch go have lunch come back maybe an hour later if more time has passed uh, past the uh, session timeout once that same person starts reading that same article, it's going to be counted as a new session. Uh, so to prevent that, that, that's actually why I would recommend just increasing that. And the maximum you can do is um, 7.55. I haven't really thought of a, a reason where that would be a problem to have a maximum, a, a very large timeout. <clears throat> um, yeah, if you can think of a reason to not do that, curious to get your thoughts. Um, but the problem there again would be somebody coming to your site and then uh, not doing something for 30 minutes, they'll time out. And then once they start engaging with your site again, Google will trigger a new session um, and that'll effectively be direct traffic to your site, that new session. So you would lose the, um, the, the traffic source. All right, this next one is going to be unwanted referrals. Um, a classic example will be for e-commerce businesses. Uh, if you're sending traffic to say PayPal and then PayPal is redirecting that traffic back to your site, you, um, you don't want your reports to be showing you a lot of referral traffic from PayPal because PayPal is not really referring you a lot of traffic. They're just sending your traffic back to you. Um, so if you have that kind of a situation, you'll wanna to go to um, the unwanted referrals list, which is the same area here in the data stream list unwanted referrals. <clears throat> and you can see, um, we actually use a, a tool called Infusionsoft for uh, order processing. So that's why uh, I put in Infusionsoft here. That way, any traffic that went to Infusionsoft for an order and then got redirected, redirected back to our site, <clears throat> Google's not going to consider that a new session that um, <clears throat> was referred by Infusionsoft. And then chip, just going back to the timeout, that does not affect the time on site. Time, time on site uh, will be determined by how long the person is actually um, on your site. Um, well, yes, if, if they left and then came back, uh, let's say an hour later, it will skew the time on site to a, uh, to a higher number. So that's correct. Um, and then Kim, yes, you would add 
subdomains to this section here if you don't want uh, your own subdomains to be counted as a referral. And that's, we don't have any on our site, but uh, I did list www um, as well as uh, without it. <clears throat> Next is going to be cross domain traffic with tracking, which is very similar to what we just talked about. Um, so again, in that example where you send traffic over to PayPal and then comes back to your site, if you don't set up cross-domain tracking, then uh, anyone that goes from your domain over to another domain and then comes back, that will trigger a new session. Uh, but you really want to track that as one session. You want somebody who, let's say, clicked on an ad, went to your site, then paid on PayPal's domain and then came back to your site. You want that to be one session. And you want to be able to see that, okay, that came from a paid ad, and then they they made it through that whole path to the purchase. <clears throat> and the way you do that is you need to add in your uh, your domains. Uh, configure your domains right here. So just configure any domains as well as subdomains. All right, next is data retention. And this by default is going to be two months, which is pretty short. And we're gonna to get to um, the exploration reporting later. And if you don't change this, you'll only be able to use that report for the last two months. So for this, we're going to data settings. So I'm in uh, Google Analytics, the admin area, which you can get to by clicking the uh, the gear icon. And then data settings is right here. And then data retention. And you can see I already changed this. They give you two months by default, and then you have the option to go a maximum of 14 months. And you just wanna save that. I agree. Uh, I don't know why it's only two months. I, I mean, I guess from uh, Google's perspective, they don't want to have to store all that data. So it, it does make sense to me from just a cost savings perspective. All right, the last thing I want to touch on here is reporting identity. <clears throat> uh, and I add some notes here. Just there's three options. By default, I believe it's going to be blended. And that's going to be the most accurate way to track for cross device tracking. And this is Google's solution for people using multiple devices, which is very typical now. You might um, advertise and get somebody on their mobile device that you know they click on an ad, check out your site, but they don't actually do anything. They don't make a purchase. And then later on, maybe that day or at night uh, or the next day even, they go onto their computer, go back to, their, to your site and place an order. There are ways for Google to figure out that that is the same person that, used the mo that clicked on an ad with their mobile device and then made a purchase on their computer. Um, their most accurate process is called blended it uses a lot of different data points. Uh, the problem with that is it's going to, uh, some of your reports will hit a threshold and uh, you won't get all of your data in those reports. And then there's observed, which is uh, not, not as accurate as blended, but then the trade-off there is you're not hiding as much data in your reports. And then there's device-based, which is the least accurate for cross-domain or cross-device tracking, but then that opens up uh, more data in your report. So if you're running into issues with your reports, and this can happen a lot for businesses that don't get a lot of traffic to their site, uh, Google will say that they're withholding data due to the threshold. Um, 
which basically means if they showed that data, they think that you'd be able to match the traffic to real people. Uh, so they they have some safeguards in place from uh, just like an identity, personal identification issue where if they show the information, they're scared you'd be able to match it to actual people. Um, so what they do is they hide that data uh, and they'll in the reports, they'll say it's due to the threshold limits. <clears throat> so I just wanted to make you aware of that. And if you want to change it, you go into the admin area here. You can chain the, change this at any time. It does not impact your, um, your data. You can kind of toggle in between these and just see how it impacts your reports. So again, by default, it'll be blended. And you can see uh, uses user IDs, Google signals, device IDs, and modeled data. And then observed is the same, except for it's not using any modeled data. And then device-based is only using the device ID. So you can use your reports in blended. And I just want you to, you to be aware that if you run into a report, uh, and you'll even see some discrepancies in the data. <clears throat> you might see, um, you know that you have a lot of conversions, but the report is, you know, you know you've got 30 conversions, the report is only showing you 10. And then when you look at that report, it's telling you it's limiting the data due to the threshold. What you can do is come in here, change it to device-based, save that. And then that should give you more data in that report. All right. I hope you enjoyed today's training on Google Analytics 4 and some of the settings changes that you need to make today, ideally. And if you want to learn more about Google Analytics 4, just know that we put together a step-by-step ebook that's going to show you everything you need to know. Uh, who's, you can find out things like who's visiting your website, where are they coming from, what are they doing on your website, among a lot of other things, so you can get a copy of that PDF by clicking the link below.